I I continue and just want to to introduce our uh, talk of this shape right now. Our speaker is uh, of course an author, the owner and CEO of BCDID Group, which is here here right now. He's a speaker of marriage consultants, and you can uh, maybe if you are uh, watching TV five. In the, in the radio, he's already have, uh, he always has these uh, programs about marriage. Uh, I will not, uh, I think, uh, if you can see his book, uh, yeah, later he will also share with you about marriage. He's one of the speakers in Popcorn, in this WD. He's the speaker of the speakers. Actually, he conducts seminars in different parts of the country. And we're so blessed. Graham Thomas and Ray are blessed that uh, the owner of BCDIP is here to give you some messages and inspiration in this wedding day. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Angelo B. Basse. Thank you, nobody. <coughs> marriage. Huh? We always hear people say marriage is the union of two souls, etc. Making promise to each other. However, uh, promises are made to be broken. No? The lines that were invented by the human beings. So I became interested in understanding marriage more. Because I became a victim too of ignorance. So for 30 years I've been studying marriage. And I discovered the reason why people fail with their promises. First, I learned that promise is made between two human beings. And in marriage, it is called vow or vows. And when you say vows, it involves the creator, it involves nature. Because we, we didn't decide to be a male, right? We didn't decide to be a female. It was the natural course of design of life. And sooner or later you will feel, like Carl Jung said, there is something missing. No? A psychologist named Carl Jung. There's something missing within us. So we are looking for a partner which will complete us, who will complete us. No? The same feelings of the woman, that he has something, something manly or manhood is missing in, in her body. Until you learn how to until you learn to enter into a relationship with an opposite sex. <clears throat> they are called opposite because they differ in different habits or attitudes, especially the natural reaction of the body. They differ. Okay? So that's why they are called opposite sex. So I discovered that people who made their vows, who who also destroyed it later. It's all about ignorance. <coughs> Socrates, great philosopher from the Greek, they have thought of this centuries ago. This is not a new information that I will tell you. Socrates said, wisdom is the beginning of definition of terms. So when you define the word, you will understand the true meaning of it. Let's define marriage. Marriage is from the word gem. The Hebrew language gives different meaning of marriage. It's a gem. Fusion of two precious elements. Can you that out? That's a problem. And what did Albert Einstein say about ignorance? He became a philosopher later on. <laughs> it is not just his talk about Sis, wag malamig, ah. but also about marriage. He said, marriage is a race. Wag malamig, ah. When we say race, it can okay. certainly come to the end of the night. And it can only be an enjoyable ride if you have the same spirit. 
What's that? What does that mean? Having the same spirit. It means deciding together. Not deciding just you. And you will just surprise your spouse later on. I decided this. You know that, did you know that even the small thing that you buy in grocery, your spouse needs to know why you are buying it? Did you know that? <laughs> One decision. Small things, excusable, like your makeup, your... But if you still have a stock of makeup, then your husband will question you. You still have a lot of stock of makeup and lipstick. Why are you still buying? Okay? I don't... Uh, it's your natural. No, you, you love things, you love colorful things. No, it's your natural creation. You, you didn't decide on that. And even your own money is your own money. And the money of your husband is still your own money. And I also ask, why? Why they feel that way? Then I go back to the place where the marriage took place. The very first marriage took place. Where? In the Garden of Eden. So it will become, your marriage will be problematic the moment you don't believe that the marriage started in the Garden of Eden. Magsisimula ang problema mo sa inyong mag-asawa pag hindi ka naniwala kung saan galing ang marriage. Nasa Garden of Eden pala nang galing ang marriage. Again, let's define garden. Did you know that it is not an actual place? It's an environment of order. That's what garden means. It's an environment of orderliness, of being organized. And Eden is a spot, a spot on earth where God and human beings are living together. So if the marriage happened there in the Garden of Eden, that means the marriage should work under the environment of God. So if you don't believe in God, that's another problem for you. You will remain ignorant of the design of marriage. Now, every time I teach married couples applying for marriage license at City Hall, every time I ask the question, who believes in perfect marriage? Nobody is raising their hands. They even nod their head. Not raising their hands and nod their heads at the same time. Even without finishing the question. Nobody believes in perfect marriage. Why? I realize because the old generation failed to prove to the next generations that there is a perfect marriage. Maybe let's define perfect first. Do you really understand the word perfect? It's not the holy thing or something that you see walking down the road the very holy, even the holy, you should understand that word. Perfect means alignment. Just go backwards and you will know, you will understand. I don't mean the perfect. So when it says alignment, alignment to what? Alignment to the design of marriage. When you align yourself together as a couple in that design of the marriage, you will never go wrong. People will always say, put God in the center of your relationship. But how? Is that automatic? No. God does not dwell in unholy human beings. So how do you become holy so that God will dwell on you? It starts from aligning yourself first to the standards of God. I-align mo lang yung sarili mo. You have to fix what you are, how, how you talk to your spouse. Do you, do you speak to your spouse with love? Or do you shout at her? Do you speak to your husband with, with respect? Or do you insult him? That's when the only time that God will dwell in your marriage is the moment you align yourself. That's the time. 
It depends on us. So if you don't align yourself, how you treat your spouse, how you treat one another, God will not dwell in you. So you, it's hard to become one as a couple when there's no God in your relationship. So, what is holy? I'll go back to that word. Because some people will tell you, I, I cannot be holy. Only those in the, inside the church are holy, or inside the churches are holy. Do you understand the word holy? It's from the word integrity. Integrity. You just Google it later. Integrity. Integrating the mind, integrating your words and actions into one. Very simple definition, right? And Jesus said, be holy just like your Father in heaven who is holy. Will He command something that we cannot do? That it's impossible to do? Huh? Mag-uutos ba siya ng isang bagay na hindi natin kaya gawin at imposible naman pala? He will not make a command like that. So this speech is laying the foundation about marriage. Here's another one. Most couples fail to make it together as one because the husband does not have a vision in his life. And that's the first requirement of God to Adam. When he put the man in the garden, God said, work and take care and protect the environment, protect the garden. And work in Hebrew means vision. That's why you get frustrated when the man that you choose to love has no vision in life, has no goal in life. So it's important for you, Graham, to have a vision. Because your wife will never know. If you ask him to submit to you, where the marriage would be going if there's no vision, right? How will you ask the person to submit to you when, he, when you don't even know where you're going, right? And all of us are created like eagles. There's a deep desire for us to fly high, to reach our goal. But sometimes only the husband has a goal and the wife is being left out. What does it mean? The wife should also fly high with you. You should fly together, not just the husband alone. And how does the woman fly? You bring, you bring her, you cultivate her. That's the meaning of husband. It's a system already placed. You will not have no excuse on the judgment day. Lord, I didn't know. No, it was there already. <laughs> you need to develop your wife so she can also fly with you. Together. So you can fly together. Develop her. If she doesn't know how to cook, bring her, send her to culinary school. Right? She doesn't know to speak a specific language, and send her to language school, and develop her. That's why I admire husbands who invest in the schooling of their wives. If there's something missing, you don't need another person. You just cultivate her. Because you cannot get, uh, get out anymore of them in the marriage. Right? Everything is in place. Almost all scientists are in, in Europe. They have studied all of this. They have written it in the books. Our obligation is to just read them and understand. Every successful career, marriage, there are three secrets. Only three secrets. What are those? It starts from knowledge. Get the right knowledge about marriage. Second, Understanding. You need to understand the knowledge that you are getting. Understand. Analyze. Then what comes next? Application. 
And it is called wisdom. It starts from knowledge, then understanding, then application. Because when you apply those things that you understand, you will prove yourself they are true. Okay? Then you become authority of that subject. And you can share it to people just like me. I understand the very, very well. And we are very excited all the time to share this. We cannot afford to be ignorant anymore. That's not an excuse. Okay? Finally, our marriage definition in family code, it says, is a special contract. Special contract, which only means there's an ordinary contract. An ordinary contract, you, you can dictate your terms. Here's what, here's what we should do. Here's what you should do. You pay this, you do this, you pay this, I pay this. That's a civil contract. As long as you are not violating any law, not contrary to morals, public policy, or customs, it is the law between the two of you. But the family court says it's a special contract. Why? Not subject to our stipulations. You cannot impose your, your attitude to the marriage anymore. You cannot impose your vices. You cannot impose your, your habits, which are not helpful to the institution. Diba? Kung hindi makakatulong sa marriage, hindi kailangan ng marriage yan. Maldita ka, hindi kailangan ng marriage yan. Babaero ka, lalong hindi kailangan ng marriage yan. Hindi ka patapos sa pagpapasya sa sarili mo. So don't enter into marriage if you are still experimenting your life. Okay? <laughs> you know, whenever I speak in marriage, about marriage, sometimes it uh, it takes me four hours. <laughs> but I cannot do that now. <laughs> so, just remember those principles. Principles are first law. You are not entitled to your opinion. It's already an established law, even before the human beings were created. So, you want your vision to have a happy family, to have a great children walking around you want to have a happy dining table all the time that's a picture that's a good picture everybody wants that deep inside our hearts we want that right so how to make that happen start with putting the right mentality in your marriage and you will never go wrong congratulations Graham and Rhea.